Hey guys, um, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I kind of wanted to do a little something a little bit different. Um, as you guys know, Spider-Man No Way Home just came out this week, and I got to saw it on the world premiere, um, in the drive-thru here in Barbados, and it was phenomenal. Um, this first part of this video, I'm gonna just talk about um non-spoiler stuff, stuff that you won't necessarily need to know. Um. Like not well stuff that we already know about, and then my general thoughts on the on the um on the movie, and then the second part I'm gonna get into spoilers, talk about major plot points, major stuff that I found within the movie. So this first part for everybody, everybody can watch this if you watch the movie. If you haven't, I'm not gonna spoil the movie for you guys. I just need you guys to go and watch it. So this first minute and and twenty, I don't know how much, however long. Um, this is just for you guys to. Um, basically understand a little bit about the movie and stuff that you need to know going forward. The first thing that I do recommend for you guys is that if you haven't watched the MCU Spider-Man movies, you need to watch the first two to understand what's going on in this movie. Also, you also need to go back and watch the other Spider-Man movies from Sam Raimi's 2003 and, and onward. And then the, um, the one from... Andrew with Andrew Garfield from 2015 I think it was you guys need to watch those to understand the villains as we seen in the trailer we have the villains from both of those movies coming into this movie and all of the other release stuff you guys know you've seen those in the in the trailers so if you you need to watch those movies to really understand stuff that goes on in this movie in this movie um Tom Holland Spider-Man really it really really it really like <laughs> what how, how do i put it it really shows the complete character of tom holland spider-man from the first spider-man movie all the way to this it gives it a full character arc a full a full you you really understand what he's going through you know the classic spider-man that we always know and love so this 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 one is really where you see that character come f come f full out and you understand the Spider-Man character, etc. No, um, if you guys haven't seen the movie, you need to go and watch it before you get back to this review. I'm gonna stop this review and we're gonna start talking about spoilers now. So that was it for the non-spoiler review. I need you guys to go and watch the movie and then come back to this video and you're gonna watch it and watch the rest of my explanations and stuff that i've seen in this movie um i've read quite a bit of comic books and i've read a lot of movies i mean read a lot of or watched a lot of animated series and, and movies and stuff on spider-man so i know a little bit about the character but um it's not my favorite character i i must say but this movie it was incredibly written well it was written incredibly well um so if you guys haven't watched the movie again click off the video now i'm gonna start spoiling in one in five four oh god it's three four <laughs> three two and one so this movie was written incredibly well from the first point in the movie your emotions went up here then down here then up here again it was just a roller coaster of emotions from this one movie like it was absolutely crazy y'all like i i i've never felt so much i've never felt so much emotions in in one space since endgame endgame was the last movie that did that for me that was back in what 2020 2019 well whichever year it came out but this movie really it is i i feel like it could have it has the potential to beat endgame in terms of stuff because not everybody knew about Than thanos but everybody knows about this the sinister six villains or at least the five that we seen in the movie and everybody knows about spider-man so this movie really, really, really was pretty big and it was an ensemble. So in the first act of the movie, from what you know, I remember, um, basically it was a follow from the mysterious stuff, from him having his identity revealed to people finding out about MJ and Ned as being their friends, being his friends, and it really started to, you know, get get at them, you know, get at and affect their lives they got rejected all the mit and everything like that and this is when you really got he peter really got the 
the the first brunt of attacks you know the the first brunt of the reality of being a superhero and being somebody that everybody has so many eyes on and you can easily be criticized by a normal person on on anything that you do and it it really sucks it it, it his life started to suck and he couldn't live at home etc cetera, etc cetera. so um after they found out he got captured by the cops etc cetera, etc cetera, and they had to start to interrogate them there were a lot of comedy bits in here especially with ned and you guys need to go ahead and watch that because that i enjoy that a little bit um but then we went on to um the the arc with um charlie cox's uh matt murdoch i think that's what you what, what his name is um the daredevil basically he was his lawyer in the movie got him off of some charges etc etc and there was this really cool moment where you know they foreshadowed him being daredevil and um somebody threw a brick through the window and as spider-man was going to catch it Matt, um daredevil caught it himself and he said um tom Holland, spider-man was like okay how did you do that and he was like i'm a really good lawyer so that was that was a nice little tidbit that we really enjoyed and like there was a thunderous reaction when we saw the king come down we saw him just show up in the movie it was it was amazing and um a lot of follow happened and and this is where we get to the point in the trailer where we saw him go to dr strange and ask if you know dr strange could do a spell of um you know they got rejected at MIT and then he saw this little this little like witch or wizard thing from a Halloween thing at MJ's uh parlor or whatever. And he went to Doctor Strange to ask without without consulting his friends, because that's a big thing in the movie. Um he went to Doctor Strange and asked if he could um do a spell to f make everybody forget that he was Spider Man. And in the middle of it he's kept changing the spell which made the spell, you know, go Oh, the hand people go over there, go out. So everybody thinking that Doctor Strange is Mephisto was absolutely wrong. And no, he's not Mephisto. He just screwed up, basically. And um, that really had a big impact on what was going on. Um, it, it like like that that started a break, and it started instead of people forgetting who was Spider Man, it started to hold villains from other universes into this universe that knew of spider-man or knew his identity so where we saw that's where we saw lizard and first we saw the art on the bridge when peter was looking to get um you know his friends taken off of the you know the blacklist for mit i wouldn't even call it a blacklist they just weren't accepted because they knew spider-man and when when they did that like it was like you you could see that it wasn't really about him in his head he just wanted to do stuff to get to to, to make things right and whenever it's a common thing in in spider-man for whenever he tries to to help he ends up breaking everything so he gets attacked by dr octopus we had a nice little um little tidbit with with them talking you're not spider-man etc and then the man the myth the legend Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin showed up and started to wreak havoc. And um, there, while in the middle of that, Doctor Strange pulled Doc Ock and Spider-Man into his little like dungeon kind of thing in under the Sanctum Santorum, and he 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 um you know kind of kind of went at him you know like about about the change of the spell and all sorts of stuff and uh, a lot of that is what we saw in the trailer so then um you know the little funny bit with um was what was your name again dr auto activist blah, blah 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 we saw that in the movie there um then we move on to you know spider-man catching all the villains etc etc the ones that thing electro got a serious makeover bro and it like it was it was cool because i didn't like i didn't like the the max or the electro from amazing spider-man i hated how they made the character look i hated how they made jamie fox look so dorky etc and max is not a dorky character from the comics he's not and i i didn't like that they did that to him but 
they redeemed themselves in this one and they addressed it as well which was really cool they addressed that you know because it's a different university like the energy the energy made him look different he was a completely different like looking character and and he was just cool now like i love jamie fox for that bro like he made that character look so cool and when he went to capture electro then sandman came up you know obviously from sam remy spider-man movies um what do you call it him uh sandman actually like became good um spider-man was was able to convince him to you know not go through some of his plan etc etc so then we had um what do you call it we had sam man helping spider-man capture electro and then um i don't remember exactly what happened how sam man got captured i think he was like um i don't trust you because you're not my spider-man he's not the spider-man he knew because obviously he knew toby mcguire spider-man and not tom hollands so then it looked like he was gonna attack peter but peter i think zapped him and sent him over to the to the little dungeon where they had him locked up um he was able to capture lizard i'm pretty sure and uh somebody else i don't remember right um you could really see willem defoe they gave they gave him a really good good character arc in this movie where he was norman was really battling the green goblin character in in his head and you saw the 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 real emotional troubles that he was having and it, it kind of in my head it kind of made me remember schizophrenic patients you know how they they they're they're not too sure of you know who's in control and that really i really like i don't know it, it seemed really comic accurate and it was amazing to me and then we went on to um peter wanted to try to help them instead of send them back because they realized that if he sent them back they will all be sent back to die um there was a, some nice comedic parts between all of the the villains there there was they were bantering about their separate universes talking about how they died etc etc so then um that's where we see dr strange and peter start fighting because you know peter wanted to save them dr strange being the level head that he want he is you know we're gonna send them back i don't care what it's not our responsibility to save them so then peter being kind listening to Aunt may you know he took the, the little box from dr strange and that's what they were fighting for in the trailer we had this amazing mirror dimension scene bro that, that every time they do that that's crazy to me and i hope that we see that in dr strange next year next after that we went on to peter helping them we went over to happy's apartment where they had a stark fabricator and electro was like i can he's got some back there i can feed it bro bro i i love jamie fox's electro in this one like he was just like so cool so hit bro that was amazing bro and then he was like he was like uh, let me see if i could 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 uh impersonate him he was like nah he's got some back there i can feel it and he had this little wall bro that was amazing um so they were starting to they first built something for dot dot art which would um because of the chip in the arts um tentacles or whatever they started to control him instead of he controlling tentacles so peter was able to fix that and get something better and he got uh, got back you know his full control over his arms his arms weren't controlling him instead and then the spidey tanks start to tingle we got the spidey sense tingle he was curing electron they were working on a cure for goblin and his spidey sense started to tingle and that's when you realize goblin was up to no good and it, it was switched you know it was no longer no armor and orsborn it was green goblin and then green goblin had this chilling speech and he just motivated electro and the other villains to you know go bad again and they all just left lizard um was left out downstairs in a, in a truck or whatever i guess because of his how he looks etc etc and um from there like we had this amazing fight scene bro green goblin was power bombing speeder peter through floors and shit bro like it was it was it was it was crazy to see that like and you could see the emotions bubbling at etc and peter told ame to run at that point and she was running she had the cure in her hand when they got down to the lobby and 
that dude green goblin bro he killed at me at first he like you saw the glider fly through the building i was like there's no way she's dead there's no way she's dead no way that she is dead bro but then she got back up and when she was talking and stuff she started to fade away it was like wait what what you like it's like they bring you down bring it back up when she got back up and then brought you down again and then you had the realization that she was dead and then peter you know happy he showed up you know obviously there was damage control or whatever they called um apparently they're a police group no not necessarily a special forces group and they were gonna start firing on super spider-man and they arrested happy and happy told spider-man to run spider-man ran etc etc so let's, let's go back to um dr strange and peter before all this happened peter had you know used his knowledge of geometry etc etc to lock or outsmart dr strange and trap him in a mirror dimension and he took his ring so he could come back you know the real ring the magic ring thing that they do they use and he gave it to ned and ned was like you know spider-man needs our help because they realized that you know Aunt may was dead and said spider-man needs our help and then um after that they were like they they tried to get him they tried to, to to see peter and what do you know ned opened up a portal he shelved for spider-man but this was not the spider-man you thought it was it was andrew garfield spider-man and he came through and they went through all this like process of of him proving that he was spider-man that was really cool too then ned did it again to try to find peter and here comes toby mcguire spider-man and like there was there was such an uproar and as i said this is a drive through so for me everybody was honking their hearts people were like yeah i was screaming bro i had after that like my voice was like super super deep because you know that's what happens when i shout my voice gets really really deep um not necessarily sore but deep and then um after that like i don't know like i was just a roller coaster of emotions they they went towards peter you know they they andrew garfield and and toby mcguire was like you know they they all have something in common they all go to this high place where they can think and um somebody said empire state building somebody said another building i think and then um mj was like yeah we know where he would go off to think and then they went there and they gave him a hug etc and then you saw andrew garfield and and uh toby mcguire just standing on the statue their silhouette as spider-man just over the over peter and peter was like ready to fight and then you had the two spider-man came down and he realized there were two spider-man they were like no 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 i don't you you guys gotta go back you guys gotta go back he was just like hurting inside you could see the emotion like tom Holland really did a good job on this character bro and he just was like you guys gotta go back like you got to go back and they had this little speech and he was like you don't you guys don't know what i've been through and then they started talking about uncle ben and gwen and losing someone and then that famous quote um with great power comes great responsibility they kind of finish him saying that and that's when he realized you know they all went through the same thing and that's when they started uh, this had this cool little scene where they were in the lab and just they were just there i guess talking and and figuring out curing how to cure them and it was like this really cool tidbit where all of them had a friend that betrayed them and ned was just asking questions and ned was like peter i hope you know i'll never betray you which was really really fun um i don't know they might be they might be hanging to something far in the future you never know but yeah um then we got to the the end of the movie the, the last arc where they were you know just working together and they they had this nice little banter with all of their experiences and um you saw andrew garfield and and uh tony mcguire which you can see that they're like at different stages of being spider-man um 
Tobey Maguire obviously being the oldest he had back problems Andrew Garfield kind of helped him with his back problems and stuff and you you can see um Andrew Garfield in his character arc his his Spider-Man has clearly gone on from you know being stuff but well Peter one is still pretty much fresh um his trauma is still pretty much fresh and um they talked about it they talked about certain things that they did Peter was like um uh I think it was no I think it was Tobey Maguire said that he he fought an alien from outer space and Andrew was like huh you fought an alien I only fought like a lizard <laughs> and and then um Peter was like I fought a purple alien in space and they were like all like you know that's cool etc etc um after that like <sighs> Like they they talked and then I think Electro is the first one to show up, and they start fighting Electro, and then the other villains start to show up and they they went into this big fight and it was so cool to see all three Spider Men just working together and and the only Spider Man that actually work on a team which is Sp- Tom Holland Spider Man was like giving artists Spider One Spider Man One Spider Man Two do this do that do that and that was really really cool and um. But let's let's and then they started to cure everybody one by one. But then Green Goblin's little smug little tail came in, bro. Willem Dafoe was just frightening in this movie, bro. Like I can't even tell you. I can't even imagine. Like just you could see the pure evil there. You know, like this is like the Joker for Batman. You know, I, I'm sorry for the comparison, bro, bro. But it was literally like the Joker. He was just so psychotic in this one and. Willem Dafoe is such a great actor with he really owned this character bro and um in in that part like they bro it got brutal it got it got so brutal he was just beating down on on Green Goblin I mean Tom Holland Spider-Man he was just beating down Green Goblin and it looked like he was gonna kill him bro he was like just punching him pulling him back punching him again and bro and like I don't know. I I thought I really thought he was gonna kill him. He probably was gonna kill him, but then Tobey Maguire Spider Man kind of kind of stopped him from that, and he got stabbed by Green Goblin. And Andrew Garfield just threw the cure at him, told him to thing, and and he cured Green Goblin. And that really that really showed the the character art for Tom Holland Spider Man. In my opinion, bro, that was amazing. I, I I don't think I've ever seen a movie do something like that for me besides endgame and like the emotions were up there then down there it was like yes what yes bro and it was it was just so much back and forth and up and down in emotions and you you bro bro i don't know what to say but this movie was was amazing the writing was excellent i'm excited to see what they do further with the character i'm excited for new movies coming up I'm not gonna really talk about the post credit and set credit scenes or whatever. Um, one of them, Venom, no, is in the gonna be the MCU when um Tom Hardy's Venom got transported there, and then they were about to get sent back, but a piece of the symbiote stayed. So I'm assuming that Marvel worked out a deal with Sony with the Venom character. So now we will have two access to two different ven- Venoms, one from the Sony universe and one in the MCU, which is probably going to come in the next Spider-Man movie. I think that's what they were foreshadowing. And then the second Spider- um, post credit scene was basically a trailer for Doctor Strange, um, Multiverse of Madness. So far, we know that Wanda is going to be in it and the other guy from Doctor Strange, the, uh, the Black Sorcerer guy. I don't remember his name, but yeah, he's going to be in it. So... That was kind of my review of, of um, I, I see why Rotten Tomatoes gave it 100%. And you guys, um, it, I, I really hope that you guys have watched the other Spider-Man movies before you watch this. Because they really showed you the, 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 the things that these Spider-Man had to go through to get to the point where they are. But yeah, um, let me know what you guys think of this movie whenever you watch it. Um, uh, those are pre- kind of my kind of my thoughts on it. It was amazing, amazing, amazing movie. I enjoyed it. I see why they give it hundred percent. It's a ten out of ten out of movies for me, bro. I I thoroughly enjoy this movie. But um, without further ado, thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, 
hopefully you guys enjoy the movie hopefully you guys enjoy my review if you like my review put a thumbs up let me know what you guys want to see next i'm gonna start doing more videos like these stuff to talk about you know real life stuff um stuff that i come across on a daily basis and uh we'll go from there so thank you guys again i'll see you guys next time have a great day have a great week remember to like like the video subscribe push my video in the algorithm i'm gonna be doing some more stuff on my channel but yeah help me push my videos y'all and uh i do appreciate it i'll see you guys next time have a great day have a great week